Just minutes away from Southport, North Carolina, by passenger ferry or private boat, an island escape awaits. Baldhead Island, with its pristine beachfront, full-service day spa and salon, and numerous shopping and dining options, is the perfect destination for day visitors and overnight guests. Day and weekend packages are available. Baldhead Island, an island escape is closer than you think. It's time to go to work. Jerk of all trades podcast. Hey, we're, be- we're right off the best of episode. We're- we took a little vacation. You're probably wondering where we went. Baldhead Island, Ray. We did not go to Baldhead <laughs> Island. God damn it. Oh, so. that best of episode was so good. I- it took me down memory lane. I took it, yeah. took everybody down memory lane. Oh, the uh, Baldhead Island came out of the shark story, I believe. Uh, yes, it did. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the shark that washed up on Bald Head Island, the fake news that Eddie created. <laughs> and just for spits and giggles, I decided to YouTube Bald Head Island, and I just got like the most amazing uh, little island destination beach waterfront uh, thing ever. So I was just like, we definitely got to put that in the podcast. Uh, I just want to mention that I hate you. Uh, Bald Head Island! <laughs> this is fake news. Eddie actually spent his week off I'm actually going, I'm, creating the Bald Head Island commercial. I'm retiring. And I want to mention that I edit the podcast, so I'm not sure how a Bald Head Island commercial would have possibly made it on to the podcast. So there is definitely some shenanigans. Something is amiss here. <laughs> and somehow it involved Eddie and Bald Head Island. So, so uh, good. Yeah. So it's, good. Uh, I'm not happy with it, but <laughs> it's what happened and it's done. So despite all that, we've got an awesome show for you guys today. Hell yeah. Uh, we got a lot of fun subjects, a lot of interesting subjects. We've got models being abducted and auctioned on the dark web. We've got Walmart's back to school firearm sale. We got monkey wars. Uh, we got rusty nails. We got more robots than Skynet and so, so much more. But this week we are going to start with Weed Town. So, Eddie, hit him up. Let him know oh, what, yeah. uh, what's you up know, Weed what's Town, up, man? man. We're hitting him with the fire and the fury this week. Weed Town, I like to call it Funky Town. Would you take me to Funky Town? <laughs> I need you to take oh, me to dude. Funky Town. Apparently, neither of us know the rhythm of Funky Town. <laughs> we should have probably listened to that ahead of time. But how great is this story? There's a marijuana company that's just gonna say, "Fuck it, buy my own town." I made enough money selling this marijuana legally that I can actually own 120 acres of my own freaking county out there in California. This is uh, named after Fallout New Vegas, Ray. Uh, correct. Yes, it is. Uh, Nipton, California, is actually uh, a fictional town in uh, in Fallout. So, yeah. Um, actually, I don't know if this was actually named Nipton already. So, yeah. Um, maybe are they renaming it? I'm not sure. Oh, actually, sorry. Uh, I think it's actually yeah. a city, though, right? Yeah, it was already named this, and I guess uh, Fallout depicted this city in their game. So, uh, but anyway, yeah. There's only like 16 people who live in this fucking city. So now they're all gonna get high <laughs> as fuck. So. Yeah, and uh, they may have to expand, you know, if other cities see what type of uh, economy that this little city is going to have. The green maybe, economy. Uh, you green know, getting the green. You got to adapt. As everything evolves, you have to adapt. So uh, I'm keeping my eye on this. This company plans to make Nipton the county's first energy independent, cannabis friendly uh, hospitality destination. Kind of a little bit like that Bald Head Island there. You know, it's like, mm. hey, and, and you can come and hang yeah. out. <laughs> You can go to Bald Head Island if you're bald. If you're not bald, it doesn't matter. But you if you like your reefer, you're going, doesn't to your, you're going to your Nipton, California, for sure. Right, absolutely. Uh, did you say the name of the company? American Green Incorporated. Oh, American Green. American yeah. Green Incorporated. They're hey, a technology congrats, uh, firm based out of Arizona. Big up to Arizona. Hell yeah. So they bought it for five mil. Five Damn. mil. 
So I wonder what they got left, man. If they can afford that for five million, well, you know they're caking up I mean, that marijuana. I'm I'm sure that they have a lot more that they plan on doing to this place. And so yeah. They say it's right by Nevada, the Nevada border there, about an hour's drive from Vegas. And a little bit over three hours from L.A., the town has a hotel, general store, and a schoolhouse. Yeah. And uh, its roots is in gold and silver and mining with uh, ranching. So right. it's kind of so, like, uh, you know, like uh, Death Valley out there a little bit. So it's not like, we built this city. We built this city on marijuana. It's actually the gold <sighs> rush, but yeah. Gold mines, gold mines and hemp. Yeah. This place is going to be the new hemp place, man. Yeah, absolutely. Wouldn't be it's surprised be, if the government tried to shut this shit down. So much rope there. It is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more than rope in this place. But yeah, yeah, this uh, this should be a destination for all the uh, the potheads uh, and the uh, the pot smokers uh, out there. If you're token, you're smoking. You might be uh, looking to go to Weed City. And uh, yeah, this would definitely be the spot you would want to go. It's like a little mini Colorado there in a... Uh... In uh, California, except yeah. it only has a general store, <laughs> and, uh, no bank, and no grocery store. <laughs> it just has like a little bit of nothing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, has a hotel. Obviously, they're gonna put a lot more shit there. I mean, I'm sure there's gonna be dispensaries in every fucking corner. It's gonna be like, uh, well, it's only 120 acres. The city that we live in, you know, where there's uh, yeah. there's bars and churches on every corner. There's gonna be dispensaries in every corner. So. Yeah, should be yeah. should be cool. So the uh, the question is, if you were uh, driving through there and you had a uh, had a bunch of cereal boxes and you got pulled over, you'd probably be okay, don't you think? Hell yeah. Yeah, if you had your uh, kashi goline and instead of having kashi goline in it, you had two pounds of marijuana inside of the cereal <laughs> boxes. Uh, that's actually what happened in uh, Sacramento, California. Sacktown. Uh, Donald Root Scotts Jr. Uh, he was charged with possession of intent to distribute marijuana and an expired driver's license and speeding. So they got him on the other uh, trip, the triple whammy. I uh, mean, that's a bit excessive. Yeah. Let him go after the first two. <laughs> so yeah, he was driving fast as fuck. He got pulled over and he had uh, high grade marijuana hidden inside Honey Nut Cheerios and Captain Crunch Crunch Berry yeah. cereal. They were empty because <laughs> he had probably eaten it all. Oh hell yeah! So. Yeah, that's uh, definitely pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty interesting. That's got to be. I, I don't know, really know the breakdown of California, but I wonder where uh, Weed City is in comparison to Sacramento. Well, if he was buying Kashi, he wouldn't be able to fit as much marijuana in those boxes. So I wonder if he actually did like the Kashi Goline, but he's like, man, I can only fit like you know a pound and a half in there. I need a bit to get that two. So I got to go with the uh, Golden Grams and Captain Crunch and all that you know nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so actually, the uh, this is actually perfect. So the end of the article on this actually says it's unclear if Roots Scott has a lawyer, and it doesn't matter. And do you want to know why it doesn't matter, Eddie? I know you know why it doesn't matter. I don't know why. Oh, it doesn't matter why. <laughs> because he doesn't need a lawyer. He has do not pay. Ah, that is correct. He has do not pay. That is and correct. So we're gonna we're gonna head to do not pay real quick. Mm. And it's a uh, nice little blue background uh, transitioning into purple. My it robot says, lawyer. I need to help you with, and um, I'm going to say I got pulled over with <laughs> weed in cereal boxes. Interesting. I'm sorry to hear that. Here's how I can help. Send an appeal to refund an item with impractical and unreasonably oh. warranty guidelines. If you have an extended warranty on an item, send this letter to get a refund. If warranty is unreasonable or impractical, yes. this is perfect. Yes, I want a refund. I didn't know there was weed in that damn cereal box. I want. I got the receipt, too. Oh, there you go, dude. That's fucking All perfect. All you got to do is keep the receipt and you're good. Dude. This is not my weed. I'm holding it for General Mills. <laughs> I don't know how this weed got in I have in there. no goddamn clue. I love you. Do not pay. Oh, you are man. the shit. Thank you. You were a little misdirected on that, I think. But actually, I feel like it kind of works. So. There's a lot worse uh, alibis out there. Yeah, trust me. So that's okay. Uh, but yeah, if there is a guy that needs to take a trip to Nipton, 
Uh, besides that guy, it is a subject of our middle finger of the week. So let's hit this shit. This is absolutely bananas. Bananas. And yeah. we'll talk about monkeys later. So <laughs> we want to bring up my bananas too it much. It all but... ties together eventually. Yes, absolutely. Even if we don't know it right now, it will later. And then we'll absolutely. look back and say, oh, that whole time we didn't know. But uh, yes, the middle finger of the week. Fuck this guy. The Black Death Group uh, kidnapped model Chloe Ailing. Uh, the model was assaulted, drugged, handcuffed, and stuck in a travel bag. Police said in a statement, basically, it's a couple guys, uh, Polish guys. So, yeah, the actual the recipient of the middle finger of the week is actually, uh, he's a 30-year-old Polish national. Uh, he resides in the UK. Uh, his name is Lukas Herba, and he was arrested for this. And he's a member of the Black Death Group? Correct. He is, yeah. uh, he is a member of the Black, the Black Death Group who kidnapped this chick. Um, she's a model. She's 20 years old. So yeah, I'm uh, kind of going through her, her pictures. Yeah, she's here. super fly than a mug. Yeah. So initially when the story, Poor girl, when this story first dropped, uh, she, you know, we, they were not naming who it was. And now she is naming herself and she, they're posting pictures. Of she's her like, my in, Instagram uh, is way too good not to come out her, <laughs> yeah, with just a thong on from the back with Woo! her uh, iPhone. And it's getting um, hot in here, I think. Yeah, yeah. Here's a picture of her with her dog. Here's a picture of her baby. Um, here is a picture of a reenactment of what her oh, what her body yeah. looked like when it was put into a suitcase. Is this the uh, pink leotard? Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So basically, she had arrived for a photo shoot that her agent had booked. Uh, she walked into an apartment where the photo shoot was supposed to take place, and then two men attacked her. They locked her in a suitcase. Apparently, they doped her with ketamine. No! And uh, if she didn't have post-traumatic stress before, she's probably <laughs> going to have it now, and now she's going to have to take some fucking ketamine for it. But uh, they locked her in a bag, and they carried her for hours in a car. Uh, she said the person was wearing black gloves that came up behind, and put one hand on her neck, one hand on her hip, and then she dipped and they dipped. Oh, wait, no, that's hey, not true. Hey, there you uh, go. And the other hand on my mouth while a second person wearing a black uh, something, I don't know what the fuck that is, uh, mm. injected me in the right arm, which must have been with the ketamine, said, I think I lost consciousness when I woke up. I was wearing a pink bodysuit and the socks I'm in right now. I realized <laughs> that I was in the boot. Of a car, apparently the boot is the trunk there, uh, with my wrists and ankles tied and my mouth taped. I was inside a bag with only a small hole that allowed me to breathe. So, baklava. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the the whole goal of this whole thing was basically they then posted it on the dark web and they were trying to get three hundred thousand dollars via oh, an online dude. auction for her. They're trying to slang that pussy. Yeah. yeah. Slanging it three hundred k. Uh, the, the thing says it's not Im immediately clear why the suspect took the model, um, but I think we probably uh, know yeah, that why three, that they bit, did. That Bitcoin's heavy right now. Right. So, yeah, they were trying to get 300000 in uh, Bitcoin for her. Um, yeah, eventually she was caught. Well, we shouldn't say Bitcoin specifically, but it was uh, encrypted accounts, and it was most likely, most likely cryptocurrency that they were trying to get. Right, you for can't, sure. It's harder to trace than it, most likely than anything else. Yeah. I don't know that. I'm just making that up. So if you can prove me wrong, go ahead and do it. <laughs> yeah. So apparently they were uh, they, her, their boss was angry because they're not supposed to it take mother. Sense. They're not supposed to take mothers, and she had pictures of her baby on her Instagram. So oh, so even like there's honor among thieves, right? As far so as yeah, so I guess goes. yeah. Then they released her, and uh, yeah, so. She's uh, she's back in the saddle again. She's going to probably be more popular than ever. <laughs> um, I can't help but hear this story and, you know, it feels a little bit like a publicity stunt. Um, I mean, maybe it's not. Maybe it's legit. I don't know. It's being picked up by the, um, uh, the mainstream media, but that doesn't really mean a whole lot. Depends on how she lot. looks, man. If she's got a black eye and busted lip, maybe, or something. Oh, yeah, like, I, I haven't seen a picture of her now. Um, but if she's coming out looking like those pictures, then I'm definitely not buying it. I mean, let's be honest here. There's probably a lot of plastic surgery and Photoshop and makeup uh, in those pictures. So I don't think that's really representative of what she actually looks like anyway. Mm. But I, I, I get tricked so easily. It's not fair. Yeah. By the uh, By the... I get I get suckered in every time. So the question is, were you going to bid on her? Well, for three hundred K? Yeah. 
No, 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 no. Should, should we not. should we start up a should we start up a, <laughs> a JOAT fund to get us to buy a twenty year old model on the dark web? A black market fucking hooker. A black. <laughs> do you want the JOAT podcast to get a black market hooker? <laughs> if you do, donate to the podcast. Jerk of all trades podcast at gmail dot com is our PayPal. You can send us your monies. We would love you if you did that. I think um, we could just buy like twenty thousand blowjob robots instead. <laughs> this is true. This is true. So that would probably be better. So yeah. yeah. Well, either way, whether she's a mom or not, I hate fucking kidnappers. Y'all can suck my dick for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, Fuck you guys. I wish I could stick a rusty nail in this motherfucker's eye right now, but unfortunately, I can't. Which leads me to the results of last week's universal call out. And if you peeped our Instagram, rusty nail, rusty nail. Hit him with it, Ray. All right, so I will say that we we are starting out. We are taking a sip of a rusty nail, which oh, is yeah. uh, drambui and uh, scotch with a little lemon in it, um, because I thought we weren't going to get any stories. So real quick, I'm going to take a little sippy sip of this. Oh yeah, cheers, man. Ooh, that's not bad. That's really not bad, dude. Sweet. Mm. Second sip of that. So yeah, this was actually the first universal call out that. I felt like we may have been defeated. That <laughs> it we, was close. We did not have a uh, a solid story on a rusty nail. I thought it was a little too specific, um, and so we were gonna just drink our rusty <laughs> nail, and that was gonna a be a little bit of bald head island for you. <laughs> be the uh, be the end of it. Um, but there was actually a great story that came out, like literally before we started the podcast. I decided to look it up again, oh, and yeah. we got Dude. this crazy, super crazy, absolutely. So yeah, we got a uh, we got an autistic kid. Uh, this is in let's see where the hell this is. Uh, this happened in the UK somewhere. Uh, but uh, his name is Romeo Smith. He was strolling behind his mom, his mummy, and his yeah. dad. And uh, I guess a uh, 20 centimeter long, and someone will have to transition that to uh, U.S. Because, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, plank of wood was lobbed at his head, and, uh, yeah, it stuck in the back of his fucking skull, man. So Ew. they had a fucking board with a fucking rusty-ass nail in it, and they Ew. threw it at the back of his head. And, yeah, he got fucked up, man. He was uh, he was rushed to the hospital by his parents. He had to wait in the uh, the ER, or the A&E, as they call it there. Oh. With the baton still attached to his skull, there's actually a picture of it in the back of his skull. Oh, it looks God. pretty fucked up. Yeah. Uh, he described how he feared the worst after the cruel attack. He said it was a very scary experience. When they threw the plank, I could feel it stick in the back of my head. Oh, God. He thought he was dying. Thank God the nail wasn't any longer than 20 centimeters. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's a very traumatic experience. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, he's he's autistic too. So they said it was uh, kind of hard to tell, like what his uh, and what his mental state was, but they could definitely tell. Uh, you know, in this situation, he got stabbed in the fucking head with a goddamn board. And I mean, I guess they lobbed it at him too. So it really had to be. I like hope they cut these motherfuckers. These little fucking bastards. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think the article actually says. Uh, I guess he was trapped in a tree, and they were brandishing sticks and calling him names. Um, he came down from the perch, but as the pair walked away, one of the boys picked up the plank and threw it at him. Uh, the nail pierced the skin at the back of his head. Uh, Craig scooped him up, ran into the home with the with the mom, who was a nurse. Uh, they gave him morphine at uh, at the ER, removed the nail, and uh, blah, 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 blah. Dude, these whatever. pictures are sickening. But yeah, it, oh. it looks pretty fucking horrible. Um, and I feel bad if uh, we had anything to do with this, because yeah, we. Uh, I think I actually said something about rusty nails and you know bringing back the violence violent. with the bat. Yeah, and, uh, not cool. Yeah, uh, rusty nails really wasn't going to bring anything of uh, of good. So yeah. I thought you just wanted to drink again. I thought that's why you picked yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take I'll take another sip of my rusty nail. You know, nail. if it involves alcohol, Ray's all about it. So and Eddie the jerk too. Um, so yeah, so aside from the rusty nail with this kid, uh, I actually had, when I was at work, um, I had, uh, gone and driven somewhere or whatever. And I came back and I had an empty pallet and I threw it down on the ground and one of the boards fell off and, uh, there was a rusty nail right there that I almost stepped on. So I started to get a little scared. Um, and I actually even Ooh. said something to the person that I was with about the universal call and the rusty nail thing. Um, and then I went inside and I was walking down one of the aisles and there was a girl and she was basically stocking an item and she had basically just stabbed herself with a nail 
that was inside. I guess somebody had a nail or something, and they were, like, poking a bunch of nails into this item, and she stabbed herself in the finger with a nail. So Jesus, um, criminy. Yeah, uh, I am so <laughs> hoping that we get lottery and I win the rock, paper, scissors, and I'm just buying lottery tickets every day until something happens. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it was definitely... Dude, how crazy. You stepped on a rusty nail and a girl freaking uh, poked herself I with almost, a nail? I almost, I almost stepped on a rusty nail. Oh, I had almost? the foresight. I saw it. and Like I, last second, you just Right, I saw it. it and I was like, mm, uh-uh, no, no. Wow. So I managed to avoid it. Um, In an alternate timeline, I probably stepped on it. But in this timeline, I Hell did not no. step on it, luckily. So. See, that's what you get hanging out with Eddie the Jerk, man. You get that fucking misstep and shit. So yeah, definitely Universal Callout delivers again. Universal Callout, oh for sure, always fucking delivers. If you didn't get a chance, go back, uh, scope last week's episode. Best of Universal Callout. It was a great, great fucking episode. Lots and lots of fun Universal uh, Universal Callout stuff on it. Um, so yeah, check it out. And uh, here's another cheers with the rusty nail. And absolutely, we'll uh, we'll cheers one more time. Cheers Kick it to, to the that. audible, and, and, uh, and uh, we'll be back with some more good stuff. So we'll see you yeah. after a break. Yeah, we're gonna have Eddie uh, tell you about audible. So we'll be back, guys. Hey, what's up, guys? Eddie the Jerk here from the Jerk of All Trades podcast. We got a new deal for you here from Audible.com. It's the audibletrial.com slash joat podcast link. You get a 30-day free trial with Audible.com. You get to choose from over 180,000 books. Um, you're never getting any repeats with Audible.com. I've been listening to Audible.com for a while now, and I freaking love it. Um, you know, you got your your Pandoras, your Spotify's. You're listening to the same stuff week in and week out. You're not going to get that with Audible. Uh, my personal favorite book from Audible.com is Unshakable, Your Financial Freedom Playbook by Tony Robbins. It's inspirational as a mofo, motivational as a mofo, and uh, you get your learn on with audible.com and Tony Robbins. So once again, that's audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast. Check it out. All right, guys, we are back from Eddie the Jerk telling you about Audible and how cool it is and how you need to sign up. Oh, one thing about Audible real quick, not to interrupt you. No, no, you're good. Uh, I got another free credit from Audible just for no reason, and I believe I get a free credit every month, but stay tuned. So if you haven't signed up for Audible yet, uh, it's not like you just get the one free book and then you're done with getting free stuff. (laughs) They're going to keep giving you free Uh, shit. They keep hooking me up. So I don't know if it's just an Eddie the Jerk thing or a uh, partnership thing or whatnot. Check but, it out uh, for yourself. Yeah, man. Check it uh, out. Audibletrial.com. A couple of my buddies got the hookup too. So J O A T podcast. Do it. Do it up. So uh so yeah, we're back and uh Walmart hasn't exactly been on our good list as of yet. This story is not making things any better. So oh, no. let's talk about Walmart and their uh their back to school sale <laughs> for uh <laughs> looks to be uh these are rifles that do you it accept appears. walmart's apro- apology here they're they're looking for your uh you know forgiveness as a consumer so basically they had a setup of you know rifles and well yeah every walmart has their you know weapon section and rifle section and you know they got a little picture action going on here where they have the rifles set up in the little rotation circle thing where you can shop for mm-hmm. uh, rifles and in, at the very top, there's a little cardboard cutout. Not cardboard cutout. It's like a like a official Walmart cutout right. yeah. of own the school year like a hero. Oh, my goodness <laughs> Like you're gracious. shopping for Spider-Man rifles or something. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it's supposed to be there. I mean, I will be honest. I'm accepting the fact that somebody was playing a fucking cruel joke. And put that shit up on top of that. Obviously, it wasn't supposed to be there. I'm sure. I'm just glad this wasn't in Colorado. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or like you know. Yeah. Little, oh, marijuana's little, legalized. See what happens. Well, I mean, that was where Littleton was too. No, no, that was yeah. Columbine. So, um, but yeah, the uh, yeah, somebody put this shit up there because every you know, working in retail for so long, everything is all planogrammed it's all mapped out oh and so if every walmart didn't have this and just evanston had it clearly um yeah you know somebody was fucking around and put this up but yeah uh it's fucked up true (laughs) sense of humor though like you know it's in a way it's kind of funny like this is something you would see on comedy central for right, sure. for sure. This is really, really silly. But, I mean, I think one of the biggest aspects to talk about in this is that Walmart is actually the biggest retailer for guns. 
That is correct. They're the largest retailer of firearms and ammunition. So, um, yeah. <laughs> what's going on there? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, you know, clearly there is a problem with that. Um, just to give a little bit of background on the story, um, the picture was taken by Leanna May. Um, it went viral, got reposted on Twitter, Facebook, and a lot of people got pretty fucking mad about it. And so the store manager, uh, her name was Christina. She took it down, and Walmart issued an apology. Christina, for, Christina, good job. You what took are you it doing? down. Um, I'm sure. You got too many cameras for that. I'm sure that now. Walmart was blowing her shit up, and she was definitely not happy about it happening in her store. Um, but it did happen, and so yeah. I mean, I think that this raises a lot of questions about the gun culture that we have in this country, um, and you know, what do we do about it? You know, Indiana, man. Indiana, Indiana. I'm sure they love a little their bit gu- of weirdness going on in Indiana. Uh, they they love their guns there. Uh, they love their guns in the South. I mean, you know, hey, a lot of people really like their guns. I get it. The right to bear arms is in the Constitution. All that jazz. Um, people always say, hey, when you know when there's an uprising, we need to be able to defend ourselves against the federal government. And guess what? Your shitty rifle that you bought at Walmart <laughs> isn't going to do jack shit against the things that the federal government has. So uh, you're pretty much fucked on that accord. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we just need to take a different look at the gun culture that we have in this country because, I mean, we have more uh, murders, you know, via people with guns than any other country in the entire world because we have more guns than anyone else. And I know that everyone says, hey, guns don't kill people. You know, people with guns kill people, but the guns definitely make it a lot easier. You have so many people that are dying, um, you know, via, hey, somebody, you know, someone wakes up in the middle of the night and they think that, you know, oh my God, someone broke in my house. And it turns out, no, it was just like their kid or something. They shoot their kid and they kill their kid or, you know, their wife or whatever. I mean, that happens so, so often accidental deaths or kids that get a hold of their, you know, their parents' weapons. So obviously, you know, you need to be, if you're going to have guns, you're going to have, you know, something that could kill someone in your house. You need to keep it under lock and key. You need to be intelligent about it. Um, But yeah, I mean, I think that we need to really take a really strong look at, our gun culture and you know what can we you know what what can we do to hopefully have less people be killed by firearms in our country i'm just trying to be a hero man just like walmart wants me to be yeah you know maybe this was actually a positive like like this was like hey if like the next round of columbine is happening you know you can be the hero by taking them out by buying one of these guns was that what they were going for do you think or uh, it's possible, but uh, yeah, I I don't I'm not a big fan of guns. I don't have any guns. Uh, I do like to shoot, but uh, I'm more of a knife guy myself. Uh, <laughs> I, I I like the hand to hand combat stuff. Like obviously, I'm a big UFC fan. I grew up a big boxing fan. I like do they wrestling. Use, do they use knives in UFC? That would make it more interesting. No, but it's easier to kill somebody with a knife and get away with Jesse it. Jesse Ventura ain't got time to bleed, so I don't know why I referenced that, but I felt like I needed to. Yeah, so that was from Predator. I mean, I don't. I think guns are okay. It's just that uh, people are just going to find ways to kill people, regardless of what it is. Right, but I mean, at the same time, the the guns aren't making it any less difficult. You know. Yeah, I just think we're fucked either way. Any way you go, unless you take everything from people, guns, knives, rocks, vehicles. Uh, bomb stuff, you know, like all the shit to make bombs and shit. Yeah, it's a societal thing for sure. Um, I actually watched an interesting documentary recently um, about the guy that created the Anarchist Cookbook. Have you ever heard of that before, Eddie? The Anarchist no. Cookbook. Uh, it came out in the like the the late sixties ish, and basically this guy wrote a book where it, you know, told people how to make bombs and shit out of. Um, you know, household items. And there was a lot of other stuff in it. Jesus and, Christ. Um, He actually ended up really regretting writing that <laughs> book and putting that information out there. And he especially regretted it, you know, it's once. It's kind of like the universal call out that rusty yeah. nail. It's like, oh no. Yeah. He especially. It's not what we wanted. <laughs> he was definitely regretting it when he had a documentary made about him, you know, and they were calling him out on all the people that died and stuff because people, you know, anytime people are making homemade bombs and stuff, they always find the anarchist cookbook in their house. So, yeah. That's sad. So I, I don't think they sell the anarchist cookbook at Walmart, but it's a possibility, <laughs> I right? I wouldn't be surprised. They might, they might. Be an anarchist like a hero. Yeah, be a, be a hero. So, yeah. It's like V for Vendetta. So, yeah. So maybe instead of pandering guns to the next generation of Columbine kids, Walmart should start selling some innovative air conditioners. Ooh. So, yeah, let's talk about this, Eddie. Zero energy air conditioning. Yeah, well, it would mainly just be the metamaterial that you can peel on and off what you need it to peel on. 
This is a zero energy air conditioning. Super, super cool. Super, super interesting. The team at the University of Colorado Boulder found a scalable way to manufacture this material film to cool objects. It can be applied to practically any object from roofing to solar panels to pavement and parking decks. Uh, it can both reflect nearly all income, incoming solar energy back into the atmosphere and shed heat through infrared thermal radiation. In other words, it both reflects energy and wicks away heat from a house or building. Um, you know, it takes zero energy to cool your house or parking lot or, you know, uh, parking deck or whatever you got going on, you know, like especially the house. You're living in California. You're living in Texas. You're living Colorado, in Florida. Which this came from Colorado. Yeah, Colorado. Again, <laughs> God damn, Colorado, See, California, look. Florida. You think those are the only states that exist based on yeah. our stories. You think the weed would like hinder these people. Well, look at the University of Colorado. Legal weed. I got free air conditioning. Look at me now, bitch. Yeah. yeah so this I, is fucking cool for sure. Yeah. They did a whole. It didn't just come out of nowhere. It's not like, a, you know, they're just sitting around smoking, doing the shit. There's research behind it and reasoning to it. The Earth has warmed 0.7 degrees Celsius, which is a lot more than Fahrenheit in the past century. Global warming. Yes, global warming indeed. Approximately 10 times faster than the rate of any other typical warming trend. Uh, we're going downhill fast. and <laughs> It's like they drank way too many rusty nails and they yeah. started to get a little warm because I'm getting a little warm the more sips that oh, I take dude, of this thing. So. I'm feeling good right now. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, Colorado's doing the damn thing. These energy companies, I do have a little bit of intel in, of, inside of it. They are crapping their pants as of the year 2015. So uh, probably earlier than that in some areas, but uh, definitely more abroad. Uh, they're looking at ways to... Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to get into it. Yeah, Anyways, they definitely want to change shit because they have to. Because, yeah, 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 they're, they're, try, mean, they're trying to use their money to uh, you know get the technology faster. But uh, yeah, this is super cool. It's like... Hey, why pay $50 a month every month or maybe more, maybe less? It's more than that for sure. <laughs> well, I mean specifically just for the air conditioning. Like cuz yeah, cuz yeah. this isn't going to do your wash. It's not going <laughs> to it's not going to turn your lights on or actually but it might a, turn your lights on. That's a that's a that's a big part of it for sure though. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So you're saving like 100, 200 bucks a month just when you buy this fucking uh, meta material that just rolls on and off your roof. I mean, it's crazy. But sadly, you probably can't buy it at Walmart. No, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. But if Walmart's Maybe. smart, they'll get it before Amazon right. gets it. Absolutely. But Walmart, I mean, you need to step your game up. Let's be honest. Right who's going to get it? Google or Amazon? I gotta, I gotta throw a quick little uh, middle finger to Google though for uh, for tracking my shit um, because on the side of my screen right now, I'm looking at this, uh, looking at the meta material, and on the screen, I have an advertisement with motherfucking Scott Walker here talking about thirteen thousand jobs coming to Wisconsin. <laughs> Uh, which is a st Dude. from motherfucking Foxconn and Suicide Hey, Net, you so. think Foxconn's going to be paying for their air conditioning? Fuck that. They're just going to get this fucking Do you think Amazon's going to be paying? Dude, uh, I read a story about a dude that was like 25 years old that died in an Amazon facility because they didn't have air conditioning in this fucking Ooh, thing. Oh, in, in Kenosha? No, no. Oh, just like no. overseas? No, no, it was here. It was oh, here. It was in the I United don't... States? No, it was in the United States. Uh, there was a whole article that I read about Amazon and their whole uh, their practices and their facilities well, and stuff. Yeah. So. I, I've heard nothing but bad things about working at Amazon. So. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately. I've... Sorry, Jeff. Yeah, I've heard a lot of the same things as well. So, yeah. Well, but... you don't crank out the product they're cranking out without cutting corners. Oh, I mean, for sure. You know. For sure. I mean, the, the money that they have, they're definitely cutting corners. They're definitely gre definitely greasing a lot of palms and doing some shady shit um and but yeah they're they're stepping their game up um they i just recently heard that they're going to be doing like installation things um of literally anything in your house you're buying you know a fucking bathtub and right below where you're going to buy it it says expert installation for you know whatever price your or solar powered roof right your solar powered roof uh yeah literally everything so they amazon is on their fucking game so you I'm know that you, they got to be looking at this thing I'm so. you, walmart man slacking Walmart, Super pick up your slacking. pace. What are you doing? You're doing shit like putting, uh, putting, getting bad publicity for having one of your employees put this thing <laughs> above the fucking uh, above the guns. Yeah, you sending your employees out to deliver shit. Um, yeah, Walmart is definitely not doing well, the right things right now. Some so. guys are just ahead of the curve, like the Waltons, the Walmart people. They were just giving, giving everything. The Amazon guy, Jeff Bezos, he's had to earn everything. Like he's had to go. Out. I don't think he was born rich, was he? 
I don't know. That's a great question. That, yeah, if he was, and I'm completely wrong, but I know for sure that the Walmart people were born rich. So like they're just like, oh, look at all this money. I don't really have to do too much, but not rock the boat and make sure the shit doesn't sink. So I'll just ride on these cozy ass waves in my big ass yacht and not really do much of anything. And then meanwhile, you got all these entre- entrepreneurs on the come up, on the rise with this whole internet movement. And they are just like sharks in the water, man. They are just feasting right now. Absolutely. How about Bezos and that he was like the world's richest man for like fucking five minutes? I believe it. He was the world's richest man for uh, he topped Bill Gates for like a really, really short amount of time. Um, I don't know if it was five minutes, but it was very, <laughs> very short lived. Well, he's number two now, right? Um, and then Bill Gates stepped up his game and yeah. Bill Gates uh, took him out. So Yeah, he had to uh, make public some uh, private accounts. Right. Like, oh, by the way. <laughs> yeah, let, me, uh, let me pull some of my off-seas uh, my accounts. My reserves. Yeah. yeah. And I'm back to being number one. So That's yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah. So, well, after installing my solar-powered air conditioner and roof, Ray, I'm definitely going to need something to eat. And you best believe if I'm going to eat, I'm eating everything that's on that goddamn plate, Ray. Of course you are. Richard Branson's Project Drawdown. I saw this on Twitter. I thought it was pretty damn cool. I uh, didn't re- really know too much about it. Billionaire entrepreneur Richard Branson has traveled the world many times over and is appalled by the amount of wasted food he has seen. So I don't frequent the restaurants too, too often. You know, I like to go out every once or twice yeah. a week. But uh, apparently this mug is going out every night. And he's, I'm sure he is, man. I'm sure he's a <laughs> busy motherfucker. He yeah. doesn't have time to cook. And he's sitting around other like rich people that are just like, mm, maybe I won't finish my steak tonight or some shit like that. You yeah. Know? yeah. What, so, what, what, what accent was it, that, by the way? Uh, that may be a slight Frenchman Yeah, accent. I think that was French. I'll, yeah. I'll take it. I'll that take it. That may be my Pepe uh, action. Hey, Pepe Le Pew. Yeah. But uh, so so meanwhile, these, these, these people having dinner with uh, Richard Branson thinking like, ah, I'm not going to try to eat too much in front of the big shot here. Nah, he wants you to eat, bruh. He wants you to eat every goddamn thing he just paid for you to eat, motherfucker. So eat Absol- the motherfucker shit. Absolutely, man. Uh, there are consequences to our planet and health due to waste. A United Nation, Nations report estimated around one third of the food produced globally gets wasted every year, which is a lot of mahugging food. Uh, the food we waste is also responsible for roughly 8% of global emissions. Now, not, that's not saying we're doing anything like China or like, you know, any anything like that as far as pollution goes to the global emissions. But mm. 8% is 8%, man. 8% I mean, is I mean, we that's talked a strong ab- percentage. We talked about the beef industry. They actually talk about that in this article as well and the amount of emissions that are created from that. Yeah. And, I mean, obviously, we are okay. one of the, the biggest eaters of beef. And so there's a lot, lot, lot of emissions related to oh, that. Oh, we so produce tons of it. The U.S. is definitely fucking up the world like no other, no doubt. Uh, There's actually a quote I thought was really cool on the top of this. It says, I think we all suffer from our eyes being bigger than our belly occasionally, but we don't always realize the consequences it can have on the planet and on our health. So that is so, so true. Um, So, you know, because I'm better than you, I don't eat meat. Uh, No, just kidding. Uh, I truly deep down want to be a vegetarian. I just I just can't do it. But yeah, it's I, hard. I, I think that, you know, basically the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, I'm a hipster, but not really uh, because and what it talks about in this article, too, is is that you just need to make small changes in the things that you do that will make a much greater impact, especially if more people are doing that. He talks about his company where he has a meat free Monday to kind of give people a perspective oh, yeah. of the impact that that can have. And so I think that's the biggest thing is just like, you know, look at, look at the things that you do, you know, the products that you, you purchase the things that you eat. Like when, you know, when you're, when you're making, you know, dinner at your house, I'll tell you what, I, I can't imagine the amount of food that I waste. Like I'm sure that it is quite a bit. Um, and not just when I go out to eat, you know, just like you, you know, like I would go to the grocery store and I would spend, you know, whatever, a bunch of money on a bunch of food because, God forbid you go to the grocery store and you're hungry. You're going to buy every fucking thing in sight. Oh, for sure. And plus, what you're stocking up on is on sale. 
So you're like, oh, this Not is me. on sale. I'm a sale. bad shopper. I'm oh, a bad okay. shopper. Well, you buy two of something instead of just one that you normally would buy, and then you're wasting, you know, the sale item that you just bought too. Absolutely. And you know what? Like for me, I don't buy sale items. I just kind of like I'm off the cuff. Like you know, we would have a list or whatever, but I see something and I want it. And especially if I get something that is not something that's in a can or something, you know, try to you know get fresher stuff or whatever. Has like the maximum uh, <laughs> expiration the, date on right. It. Like you know, I get fucking fresh veggies and shit. And like I finally eventually was like, you know what? I'm not going to get you know the number of fresh veggies that I'm I'm buying because so much of it is just rotting in the fucking crisper drawer and my sure. refrigerator turning into this weird sludge. And that shit that you know could have been utilized. I mean, we've obviously got globally. Like, it's it you could be feeding a lot of people. Right, right. Not you personally, but like no, hundred hundred percent, absolutely. I could have bought I could have bought that and I could have donated that. You know, sure. like I could have, you know, I always try when I go to the grocery store and I see like they have like the, you know, the, the, the brown paper bag, the donate, you know, bag or whatever. I always try to buy one of those and donate that. But still, I mean, the amount of food that, you know, I'm throwing away and stuff is just, yeah, I mean, there's no way that you can't. Um, there's people that you shouldn't be throwing food away. Right. It's almost like it's not inexcusable, but uh, it's, it's like first world problems, right? It's like a hundred fucking oh, percent. <laughs> it's like you got people that walk miles and miles and miles I to would get walk water 500 miles to get a steak yeah or dude. get a get a fucking like a rotting steak there's people that can't even get clean water to drink right much less absolutely a fucking, uh you know the 20 piece uh popeye's chicken or something right, right? yeah so, so yeah. crazy man it, globally i wish there was a way to get this food to people that could actually eat it it's one third of the food man that i mean is it, just so i crazy. think there are i mean i think there are ways it's just you know well, like you were saying though it's only the canned stuff and like you know it, it's not terrible food but like man if we there was a way to get that fresh food to these people that is getting wasted dude motherfucking so awesome. a, motherfucking amazon can get you a fucking blowjob robot in, in two like, days <laughs> not even two days or like they 24 can, hours they shipping. can literally yeah. get you that shit in four hours depending on what time you order you cannot tell me that they're not the logistics to get this fucking food to people it's just sure. it's not happening there's not, not a return happening. on income on it it's like the they're not making money off it it's like the same concept as like you know home you know homeless people um and that sounds shitty but you know whatever people without a home people that are devoid of a, a dwelling or um a job or whatever right yeah. you know these people are living on the streets and like we had the most amount of homes that had no one in them and yet these people were still sleeping on the streets because people are so, you know, tunnel vision on their own shit. And uh, I think that's the biggest problem. And beyond that, too, you know, people are always like, let's fix our problems here first. Like, um, but they're OK with, you know, going and being Asian the world, people jumping out of Apple factory, <laughs> the world's police. You know, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to about Foxconn and, you know, well, that's not going to happen here. Well, they've set the precedent that they're such a shitty company that they're uh, they're allowing that to happen in one of their facilities. It doesn't matter where the fuck it is. And yeah, we have different regulations here. But still, do you want to work for a company that thinks it's okay for people to jump out of a fucking building and kill themselves and then install suicide nets instead of putting other precautions and figuring out what they are doing that are causing these people to fucking jump to their deaths? So yeah craziness it's fucking it's ridiculousness you know we've got uh, obesity and diabetes on the rise um yeah the, one of the biggest things with this is that he wants restaurants to basically have smaller portions he wants them to have portions that are half the size and then there should be a sign that tell people that if they want a second helping they that, can get a second helping that's and a that's, great idea that's actually a really good idea oh, fuck absolutely yeah. i can't tell you how many times i've gone to a restaurant like i'm super fucking hungry and i'm like i'm getting first off like maybe you go to a fucking place they give you like fucking chicken chips or bread, bread or soup, whatever salad right yeah. and then you then i order an appetizer mm -hmm. and then i eat an appetizer and then like then by the time i get my meal fuck i'm already fucking full and i'm eating my meal and like the waiter's coming over like did you need a box and like mm, yeah i probably need a box and yeah take it home and you know it sits in the fridge and hopefully you know you go back to it and you eat it and depending on what it is you do if it's french fries you probably don't you nah. throw that shit burn it with fire uh, it doesn't reheat well at all stick but, a rusty nail in it <laughs> right stick a fucking rusty nail in it uh stick a rusty nail in the coffin of that leftover so yeah leftovers you know obviously a lot of shit being thrown away so this is great a thumbs up cheers from uh Eddie cheers the jerk here rusty nail for you richard branson uh you know we're, we got your back on this and uh 
Definitely, uh, everybody can look inside themselves and try to f- cut back on wasting food. And it's wasting money, too. It's just like... Absolutely. That's not just food being wasted. That's money out of your pocket being and wasted. And don't... You know, the biggest thing I could say with this is don't feel overwhelmed. You know, like, you can see all the issues in the world and be like, what can I do? I'm only one person. And what you can do is, so you're living your life and you're making a much bigger impact than you may realize and just try to make some small changes maybe start small scale and hopefully grow that and do more and get better and hopefully change the fucking world so absolutely that's yeah. like one of my little catchphrases baby steps baby, baby steps baby steps just no matter how small forward every yes. day forward yes even if it's just a little bit so wake up every day this is this is my fucking mantra of my fucking life Wake up every day and try to be a better person than I was the day before and make the world a better place than it was before I woke up that day. And that is my goal. So sweet. Absolutely. So if you are still hungry after all of that food talk, let's satiate you with some social media. Woo! Eddie, hit them up. Let them know. Hell yeah. I, uh, hey, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, subscribe, give us a rating. Uh, you know, leave a review if you so please. Five star on that uh, iTunes. Five star. I want a. F- I want a five count, dude. I don't want a three Ooh. count. I want you to King Bald Kong Head Bundy. Island. I want you to King Bald Kong Head Island. King Kong Bundy did have a chrome <laughs> dome as well. I met King Kong oh, Bundy one that's time. That's so great. <laughs> is King Kong Bundy still alive or is he dead? Oh, he's got to be alive. Hopefully, I think he's alive. Yeah. Hopefully. But uh, oh yeah, hey you guys, if you missed it last Saturday night on Twitch TV slash Joat Podcast. At a pretty banging ass uh, Jackbox party. Yeah, check us out, man. Yeah, we had about seven, eight players going all at once, man. It was pretty fun. Good times. Uh, we had a on Twitch, Twitch TV. orgy. Yes, 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 yes. Twitch TV slash JOAT Jack- podcast. Jacking on the boxes. You got to follow us to make sure you, you catch it because if you don't follow us, you're not you're going to miss us. So um, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Make sure you hit up JOATpodcast.com. It's the home of Jerk of All Trades. Yes, sir. And. Hit us up. Uh, any questions, comments, things you want to inquire about? Jerk of all trades podcast at gmail.com. We want to hear from you guys. Send us all of your love, please. Eddie the Jerk, drink break and uh, go into break and uh, raise audio commercial coming at you. Yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? Ray the Jerk from the Jerk of All Trades podcast, and I want to tell you about a special offer just for you, the listener of the Jerk of All Trades podcast. Audible is offering a free audiobook download and you get a free 30-day trial. It's going to give you a chance to check out their awesome, awesome service. I have a personal recommendation for you once you get your free audiobook, and it is The Psychedelic Experience, a manual based on the Tibetan Book of the Dead. It's by Mr. Timothy Leary, and let me tell you what, it is definitely going to change your life for the better. So to download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast. Get your free audio book. Get your free 30 days courtesy of the jerks. All right, guys, we are back. Jerk of all trades podcast. And last week we had our best of universal call out. And the story that started it all was monkeys. Monkeys. Monkey, monkey. Just monkeying around. (laughs) Well, they're on the loose and fucking stuff up again. Let's get down to business, Ray. They're going to war with monkeys in Indonesia. What kind of what kind of business are we getting down to? Monkey business. Motherfucking monkey business. Let's fucking do it. Indonesia has d- deployed armed police and soldiers to help villagers on the island of Java. Wait, fight- wait, hold on. What what island is it? It's the island of Java. This Java? is this is where Eddie wants to move because he is a motherfucking coffee fiend now. Oh, that's <laughs> right. I get my free cup. You get coffee all day on You're going to need coffee if you're battling Indonesia. against marauding monkeys <laughs> that have been terrorizing their area, stealing food and probably beer, and attacking vulnerable elderly residents and... Also a child. One single child was attacked. Ooh, not good. The monkeys that started coming up here two months ago, said the chief of police, Ares Andi, after we shot one of them, the rest didn't come back, and now they're back again. They're back and better than (laughs) ever. A task force was set up to patrol the area that will shoot monkeys if necessary, although traps will be used to return others to the forest. Monkeys in Indonesia are not playing no games. 
And now they're forcing the fucking police to fucking shoot at him. This is just so crazy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It says most of the villagers attacked are senior citizens who live alone in makeshift (laughs) houses. They don't really have neighbors. So when the attack happened, it's hard to get help. Among the 11 victims of the monkeys was a fourth grade student. Uh, He was. uh... Oh, sorry. This is the guy. I hope he didn't have a goddamn nail on the back of his head. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hope. I mean. That would probably be helpful if he had a board with a nail in it. He could fight off the monkeys. He could attack them with that. Uh, But here's the thing. Monkeys are adaptable. So they actually say uh, that slingshots, paintball, or firecrackers can scare them. But monkeys are intelligent because they're kind of just you without consciousness. Uh, If the people have used a slingshot tomorrow, they have to use something else. Or sorry, if they've used a slingshot tomorrow, they have to use something else like a board with a nail in it because monkeys can read these tactics. Monkeys are adaptable. (laughs) They fucking figure shit out. They just want some motherfucking fruit and they want a beer and they just want to chill out and maybe a cup of coffee or something. Uh, But (laughs) Java Island. God damn, I want to know if these are Reese's monkeys or not. I'm looking at the picture of Dude. the monkey, and I'm not a monkey expert. Um, there needs to be some monkey UFC. I'd be totally down for that. Oh, my God. If they can, can you, trap all these monkeys and turn them into fighters, I'm, I'm can you, semi-okay can, with that. Can you imagine the societal backlash when well, cockfighting is not okay? The, the but... best fighting monkeys get the best service. They get the best bananas. You know, they get the best housing and stuff like that. You oh know, they my get the goodness riches, gracious. the fruits of their labor and shit like that. But, you know, that'd be <laughs> pretty crazy so we, we put some mon- monkey UFC. We put some monkeys in float tanks and get them all zen and shit and in the zone. And then we throw them into the octagon yeah! and we fucking have them throw the fuck down. Here's the problem with that, though. You'd actually have to have a top, I think, on the octagon because otherwise no, they would climb out. Climb. No, well, it's against the rules to climb the fence. So well, I mean, you got to train them. Try, try to tell a monkey that it's not OK <laughs> for him. These are the rules. You can't you can't fucking uh, hit a guy when he has one hand on the ground or a monkey when he has one hand on the ground and you also yeah. can't climb the fucking octagon like good luck no dude. eye pokes no kicking in the balls no fish hooking oh my god you can't you can't <laughs> hit him you can't hit him in his red ass yeah uh, <laughs> like come on yeah the, definitely that would be interesting i would like to see some monkey ufc and that might actually get me to love ufc there you go if i could see some motherfucking monkeys what inside if they start the kicking cage, our ass what if they're in indonesia beating the crap out of these police officers <laughs> I mean, they kind of are, right? They yeah. had to call in the fucking task force, right? Yeah, like, I'm saying. It's yeah. not, this is not and, even and like... They're, in, they're instructed to shoot to kill. It's not even like a thing. It's just like, yep, you see a monkey, fucking shoot it. I think I think actually they said uh, they said as long as they don't disturb the villagers, they won't shoot them. But, yeah, I'll tell you right now... But they, they're actually disturbing the villagers right now. They're fucking shit up. So. Villager Eddie the Jerk does not discriminate. Same with the robot. Same with the monkey. You're jumping on my ass, you're getting an uppercut, and I don't give a shit if you're fucking Reese's monkeys, Hershey's monkeys, Mounds monkeys, or whatever the fuck you got going on. Stay off my plate, stay off my ass, and get hit with that uppercut. fucking monkey uppercuts <laughs> up in the piece. Hey, here's here's the question, actually, to tie this back. Why don't we just take all the wasted food and give it to the fucking monkeys in Indonesia? Oh, then they'll get all big and strong and fucking kick our yeah. ass. Okay, never mind. Let's not give them the wasted fucking steak. <laughs> all that steak. fucking steroid beef and steroid chicken. Yeah, chip. that's true. They yeah, we we don't need to do that. We already we already have the robots coming for us, and we don't need strong ass fucking monkeys or stronger than they currently are. So. Yeah. Craziness Indonesia. Yeah. Yeah. So wild monkeys are not fun to battle against, but I can think of something that might be a little bit worse, and that would be motherfucking king cobras. Not even regular no, cobras. No. It's fucking king cobras. Let's talk about the king cobra smuggler. Yes, this is really cool, man. Um it's unfortunate this guy got arrested. <laughs> bringing this crap through the airports i'll tell you what if i'm on a plane with this guy and some king cobras are sneaking out of the potato chip uh bags out of the uh out of the plane uh, you got some not, real life sam jackson type shit going hey, on he right actually there. did not use bags he actually used fake ass fucking chinese pringles pringle oh, was even american pringles no nah. Chinese I'm look, I'm, Pringles. I'm looking at the picture oh, of no. the Chinese Pringles, and there's a King Cobra right next to it. So <laughs> I can only assume that this is the actual. Um, yeah, this is actually the. Uh, this says the updated photo provided by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife shows a King Cobra hidden inside a potato chip can that was found in the mail in Los Angeles. So yeah, this is actually. Um, 
This is the picture of the the fucking King Cobra. Uh, this guy. Oh, that's the act. That's the real deal. This is the yeah. real deal, Holyfield. Uh, yeah, he had three live King Cobras that were hidden inside of potato chip canisters. They were being mailed to his California home. Uh, the three King Cobras, each about two feet, just over a half a meter long, were found in March when the Customs and Border Protection officers inspected a package that was mailed from Hong Kong. Uh, there were also three albino Chinese soft-shelled turtles. Ooh, well, that sounds pretty delicious. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, I thought I think I was a vegetarian. I think maybe right um, in a package. Authorities said, <laughs> um, "Yeah." So he admitted to the to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that he had previously received twenty king cobras and two other shipments, but he said they had all died in transit. So he finally got king cobras to make it over. They hadn't died. And then they fucking <laughs> snatched those fucking things from him, and that is bullshit. Oh, that, that is a tremendous feat. I wonder That's, how long he's been getting away with it. Well, I mean, he had 20 <laughs> King Cobras that died. He was only... Oh, it's two other shipments, so... Uh, yeah, uh, I guess they, they had a search warrant on his uh, house. They found a live baby Morley croc, uh, crocodile, alligator snapping turtles, and not those delicious soft-shell turtles. You, I can't believe you've had turtles before. Uh, yeah, I... Well... Wait, when did I say? Does I had it turtles? taste like chicken? No, no, I have not eaten tur. No, I haven't. I eaten thought you tur- said they were delicious. No, I was. That was me imagining how delicious they uh, oh, would be. Oh, god I, damn it! I've actually had. I've had crocodile before. And, How's that? Um, it's it's very chewy. It's like a chewier chicken. I hate to reference mm. chicken because everybody does no, that. No, reference like it, chicken, please. But, I love it. Um, yeah, it was it was actually not all that good. Um, but I did actually have turtles growing up. That was actually my first pet. My first pet was oh, uh, wow. was seashell the go. uh the turtle. It was like a box turtle and it wasn't that cool. I basically got it because I love the teenage mutant ninja turtles. And this <laughs> motherfucker did not he know any, any sort of karate. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have any fucking weapons. He basically just sat in the tank and he just set a nunchuck on his shell while he walks he was, around. Uh, <laughs> he was pretty boring. Let's not forget that we had Universal Call Out of Turtles was pretty uh was oh, a good yeah. week. But... Hey, Kung Fu Panda three. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, um, this guy's facing 20 years in prison. Oh, if convicted, yeah. If convicted, sucks. which he's probably going to get convicted. Oh, they got overwhelming evidence. Yeah. Them, so. I mean, Ro- uh, robot lawyer. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> robot hold lawyer. Hold on. Hold on, Let guys. me call my robot lawyer. Hold on. Let's bring I'm back. I'm not going out without a fight. God robot lawyer, what do you say? <laughs> I got. Uh... I got caught smuggling. <laughs> King <laughs> Cobra Cobra in potato chip cans. Cobras in potato chip cans. Okay. What does he say? I'm sorry to hear that. Here's how I can help. And need extra help. We can help you within 24 hours. Learn more. Yeah, Fuck, we broke it again. It. Let's not forget earlier that do not pay script. do not pay actually came through for us earlier. And, you know, hey, I've got weed inside of my fucking honey nut Cereal Cheerios. Yeah. <laughs> I have the receipt for this. I bought this and it yes. had weed in it already. I didn't know these cobras were in the right. fucking Seriously. can. I, I bought these fucking... I just wanted some delicious fucking fake Pringles from China and... I didn't All know, of a sudden, I'm going to jail. I didn't know they years? had. I didn't Fuck know that. they had king cobras in them. No, nah, like, that was bring me. this back. I got my that receipt. That was not me. That was not receipt. me. Uh, and what do I look like, Whitney Houston? <laughs> I got mine. Oh my god! I do want to mention too that we had our universal call out of potatoes uh, quite a few weeks back, and we had a guy that robbed a. Uh, I think he robbed like a car wash or something with what they thought was a gun, but it was actually a fucking Pringles can. So yeah. this would actually be a great defense mechanism against that. You know, like <laughs> motherfucker tries to rob a fucking, uh, or the, the dude that actually tried to steal the fucking potato chips, he fucking put King Cobras in those things, tries to rob him, fucking open the can up. It's like silly and shit. Like, uh, you know, and they have the, the little, uh, the silly joke, like snakes that come out of the fucking can. Uh, <laughs> but instead of that, it's a fucking King Cobra yeah. and it bites your ass and you viper. I don't know. Or, or, Cobras are poisonous, right? Absolutely. Okay. So, <laughs> what kind of question was that? I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. fucking Okay. Bro. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, King Cobras. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if there's one thing we have a love hate relationship besides Cobras here at the Jerk of All Trades podcast, it is without a doubt robots. Well, this is a perfect mix of stories love, blowjob robots, hate, 
asshole robots. We do not like asshole robots. Ray, let's hit this double feature. We got two videos on these up and coming robots. The first is a robot documentary. All right. So do you have this shit queued up, Eddie? I uh, am hitting play right now. Right, All right. So this is the up and coming My Sex Robot documentary. Here we go. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> We have a severed head. Ooh, that is horrifying. Jeffrey Holy Dahmer fuck. in the house. <laughs> I'm trying to look at his books in the background of those robot blowjob books or yeah, what? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, this guy's a creep. Look at that mouse. That's huge. That's to a make huge a mouse. Murder. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Ooh. He's got that big Whoa. Mouth. Whoa. Oh, he likes to draw his blowjob robot. Oh, look at those titties. Look at those titties. Look at those titties. Robot <laughs> fucking titties. <laughs> Oh, this is great. Oh, oh man. man, he's in the shop. He's going to town, man. He's like, I got to make a new one. I broke the other one. Oh, my God. This guy's toiling <laughs> away in his garage making this fucking thing. Oh, he had a whole shop. Oh, my oh, God. No. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Look at that fucker. Oh, my God. It looks like an alien. Oh, my God. Just, that was some loose fucking robot skin. Holy these fuck. These blowjob robots got no quit in them. They just oh, keep my going. God. Oh, my God. His shirt. He has a polo that says world's first sex robot. Look at this motherfucker oh, yeah, here. I've seen some ice cream. Like, everything's all normal and shit. <laughs> He's got a Panama Jack hat on. Oh, my God. Look at... Oh, is... See, I'm always, Wait, I'm always skeptical. Is that, a, is that a... Was that a robot or was that his girlfriend? That had to be his girlfriend. Was that a robot? I'm going back. I don't know. That's fucking... Oh, Dude, that has to be a fucking real life. My sex robot. I was just about to say... The I'll documentary, this shit... Uh, where is this... Co- where is this going to be shown? Um, I don't know, but I'm skeptical if my girlfriend says, hey, look what I got you for your birthday, a blowjob robot. It's like, on one hand, it's a compliment, like, oh, thank you so much. But on the other hand, it's like, oh, she ain't trying to fuck my dick now or what? Oh, my God. I want to know where this thing is and where we can watch it, because we will definitely watch My Sex Robot. It says Wednesday, oh, November man. 17th at 10 p.m. So Ugh. I would definitely like to watch this. I, I might get the cliff notes on that one. Holy fucking this balls, This creepy man. guy with his ice cream and his sex robots. I don't know. Jesus, 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 robot <laughs> Christ. This motherfucker. Oh, my God. They keep evolving. They're evolving. They keep evolving. And they're scaring the fuck out of me. So so you want to watch a robot fucker video now? Yeah. So this was, uh, that. I think that was sort of a robot fucker, but... <laughs> Uh, that was a, f- a fucking of robots, and this is the robot fucker. This is the asshole robot. Yes, this is, this is Eddie the Jerk's uh, least favorite friend. Yeah, so apparently this thing has been designed to replicate the bad traits of human beings. It pokes you, it prods you, it leaves lipstick stains on your pillow and shit to try to make it look like you're cheating on it. Um, and it's a <laughs> kind of an asshole, so let's fucking watch this thing and see All what's right, up with this three, thing. Three, two, one, go. Okay, we got a nice little background music. Here we go. Here it is. There's something these touching ro- my ear here. Yeah, a little robot thing that fucking touches your ear, fucking pokes you and shit. Designed by a female, Nicole Perez. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Just to irritate your boy. Right. She thanks. Was, she was sick of just irritating her boyfriend, so she had to design a robot that could do it when she was at work and stuff. <laughs> fucking po- <laughs> It's fucking poking him while he's trying to sleep and stuff. I swear to God, if this robot wakes me up, it's getting broke yeah. in like 0.5 seconds. Here There's she is no trying way. to explain why she created this horrible monstrosity. <laughs> this thing does... Is that a Roomba? That's a fucking Roomba, it's a dude. Roomba. That's a fucking Roomba. She's tracking your Roomba. There's lipstick. Oh, this is the thing that puts lipstick marks. She knows marks. if you move your couch pillows that you fucked another chick on it. It puts lipstick stains all over <laughs> you and all over your fucking pillow. <laughs> It's a fuck. Oh, this shit pisses oh, me off. Oh, no. It pushes fucking cups off of the that edges of tables. That better not be my coffee. I swear dude. to God, that's getting punted. Are you fucking kidding this me, little, dude? The robot bitch is getting punted right now. This is like, I swear to like God. an asshole cat who fucking pushes shit off the edge. If that's pus- pu- pushing wine off my car- under my carpet, dude, forget it. Why would anyone want this? Why would anyone want this? I like, have no If idea. I want a robot, I want it for one purpose and this one purpose like only. A, one of those gag gifts. Like a gag gif? Wait, is that a blowjob robot reference? A, <laughs> no a, way! That blowjob robot doesn't gag. No, you, a, <laughs> that oh. blowjob robot has no quit. If I <laughs> if I want to get that robot, blowjob robot look at you like gag, <laughs> please. If I want to if I want a gag <laughs> gift, I definitely want Arlen Robotics blowjob robot. That's the gag gift I want. I don't want this fucking asshole. The thing about no, this thing yeah, too this is thing can suck my dick. So okay, so well, actually, it can't. All it can do is poke you and push fucking <laughs> cups off tables and shit. Yeah, but it doesn't actually always. suck your dick. Nah, 
This is the worst use of robotics. Like if when, I get caught with my King Cobra Pringles and my weed and my cereal, I say this fucking robot done fuck me over one too many times. God damn, I'm going to get my robot lawyer and you're going locked up. I'm going to lock up this fucking fucking robot. Dude, I hate this fucking robot. This is like when they talk about like new technology and stuff. How do stuff. we know the Pringles guy didn't have a robot like this? It's possible. Just drop some rattlesnakes in his chips, and he's yeah, like, oh, was, shit, look at this. It was the fucking robot, man. This goddamn robot sabotaged me again. So they talk about you know new tech and how you can use it for good or you can use it for evil. And so you have the good, which is blowjob robot. Oh, and yeah. then you have the absolute most evil, sinister fucking design oh, of a robot. Horrible. And it's this fucking thing, dude. Oh. Who but this lady thought... Hey, robots are fucking cool and they can, you know, do all these cool things, but I would like them to do the most annoying things that human beings do. That's what I want to do. Like, I want a robot that makes it seem like I'm having an affair. Like, what (laughs) the fuck is wrong with this goddamn robot? And what is wrong with this lady? Why did she create this shit? I don't get it. I don't get it. And I don't. Divorce court's going to have a lot of fun with this shit in the next 25 years. Exactly. Dude. Or like five years, maybe. Here's the question. Let's not forget Eddie loved our universal call out of dolls. And let's not forget about the fucking haunted doll. And by the way, scope our fucking Instagram and see our fucking weird fucking doll that my girlfriend and I actually picked up at a fucking flea market today from fucking 1936, I think this fucking thing is. Uh, So it might actually be haunted. It might be haunted, and we might talk about that on the podcast next week. That's a good little doll. The evil doll that fucking was like leaving scratches and shit on the fucking dude. Um, This is like the same shit of that is that, you know, hey, just blame it on the fucking robot. Maybe you get this thing and then you actually are having an affair and then you're blame just it like on the goose. It's got your feelings. <laughs> blame it on Patron. It was, I got swear it was the, the asshole robot. I swear <laughs> to God, it was the asshole robot. These lipstick stains came from that motherfucker. They didn't come from my fucking secretary. I got my alibis, man. I'm getting pulled over tonight. That fucking robot did it to me again. I'm going it to court. Me. God damn it. What was, uh, what was that song? The, uh, the It wasn't me song from like the late 90s. The dude that was on the treadmill. Not J- Jamiroquai, maybe? Are you talking about uh, Jamiroquai. virtual reality? Yeah. Well, I think it was Jamiroquai was his name. And he was like talking, uh, got caught in the uh, the bathroom or whatever. It wasn't me. So. Are you talking about Shaggy? Oh, Shaggy. Yes, that Shaggy. That was like 2000. Was it? Oh, I said yeah. late 90s. Sorry. Not, maybe early 2000s. Not Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, right? It wasn't me. Yeah. So, but yeah, it wasn't me. Banging it, on the counter. There you go. It was my it was my asshole robot or it was, it was, my, was my evil doll. It was one of the two. <laughs> it definitely was not me. So, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. All right, Ray, Ray, go home. Yes, let's All right, let's see what this Inspire robot has to say about the blowjob robot documentary. All right. You mm. want to go first? Or you want me to go first? I I need you to go first cuz uh I'm unprepared as usual. Okay, here we go. An erection doesn't last forever. There is a picture of a chessboard in the background. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, that's got to go to Instagram. <laughs> a chessboard. Uh, if it lasts for more than four hours, there is a fucking oh problem. By the way, if an erection might last forever, if you're drinking that fucking coffee that we talked about two weeks ago that we still need to get, <laughs> god damn it. The boner coffee. The boner coffee. If you're drinking that every day, an erection will last forever. Diamonds are forever. Erections are not forever forever hey, yeah not for more than four hours keep so. getting those uh audible trials and joa to we'll get some boner we, will, we will we will definitely get some boner coffee for you guys so well it'll well, be for us but you know you yeah. guys will get to uh hear you the, get to uh, enjoy the stories afterwards that will be the best podcast a whole pot of the boner coffee no no <laughs> we need the blowjob robot not gonna make it. yeah oh, i need, I need a, a bj robot under the table here oh but boy. uh for my uh entry into the inspire robot for the week i have uh like a group of people maybe three people here uh hiking looks like up a hill or you know it's flat but they're on a hill and the quote says the material world is our bodily orifices mm. interesting inspire robots Stepping up their game with these. I, I like bodily orifices. I, bodily orifices is good. It's the material world. It depends world on if it's the ear in. hole. It depends on if it's the nose hole. Is uh, it pfft, the hole? Is it the mouth hole <laughs> on your blowjob robot? Is it the uh, is it the bung hole? Is it the great cornholio? 
we don't know, but yeah, I'll agree with that. I think that's a good one. I like it. I like Sweet. it. Sweet. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I can top that one. All right. So ready for that randomized array? Here we go. J O A T favorite universal call out part two. All right. So we got <laughs> best uh, of. We are back to topics. How many topics do we want to do? Ooh, topics. Let's do eight. Can we do eight or ten? We can do eight. Let's do eight. All you right, ready? Let's do eight. Uh, ten's too many. I, I can't go. remember all of them. All right. Refresh. All right, we got shells, we got coins, we got canoes, we got fencing, we got gymnastics, we got laundry, we got alligators, and we got balloons. Oh, alligators. I'm not mad at fencing, but it could be taken in different ways. Yeah, fencing, yeah. building fencing, or fencing the sport. Right, exactly. You like it? I'm I'm actually torn between two. I'm torn between balloons and alligators. <laughs> I knew you would like alligators. Yeah. Uh, Well, you know, we could, uh, I, I got fencing, so which one? Uh, like- we're going to have to duel it out. I like balloons better. Are we going to fence? <laughs> no. If that was the case, I would win. Okay. So we're going one, two, shoot, or one, two, yes, three, shoot? one, two, and then shoot is your number or your pick. Okay. Whatever. All right. Hold so. on. Let me let me get in the mental state that I need to be for this. For the Universal Callout Championship of the Week. All right. You ready? Ray the Jerk versus Eddie the Jerk, the reigning champ. Ready? Yep. All right. Motherfucker. Yeah. Motherfucker. Motherfucking scissors laid down the law on fucking paper. And I- new universal call out random list champion right. of the world. So are we Ray get- the jerk. We got balloons. <laughs> oh, up we're going in, balloons. We're going balloons right. up in the piece. There's like going to be some good motherfucking balloon stories that are coming into existence. So, Woo. uh, yeah, with that being said, J O A T is back with a full episode. Great episode this week. And uh, good, good to hear from you guys. Yes, yes. We love all of you guys. And uh, thanks for sticking with us. We'll be back next week for yes, sure. Yes, we will see you guys next week. And we send you all of our love. Bye-bye.